100 years ago, Red Wing, Minnesota was a river port, growing as fast as it could. Farms and factories, shops and hotels sprang up and grew like the wheat in the surrounding rich Mississippi River Valley. It was a great time to be in business. Charles Beckman shoe seller thought so, although what he really wanted was a boot that fit and that would last. See, he watched the blacksmiths, the carpenters, and the farmers, and he saw that they really needed more than one kind of boot and more than four sizes. Hard work required the right boots. When no manufacturer could help him, he helped himself and with other investors started the Red Wing Shoe Company. Soon, every 10 hours, 110 pairs of boots marched out of that first factory. The story of the extraordinary fit, comfort, and durability of Red Wing boots spread, and the company flourished. Red Wing's commitment to make shoes that fit the job continued, and in 1912, we introduced the Black and Brown Chief, especially made for farmers with manure-proof leather. It carried the new company logo, a likeness of the legendary Dakota Chief, Red Wing. But global troubles reached Red Wing when World War I erupted. Soon, all the young men left town to fight. Women entered the plants to begin making the famous Pershing boot, number 1088, for our fighting men. It was so popular that we continued to make that boot until 1965. As the decades passed, the work that people did changed, and we changed with it. Today, we produce over two million shoes a year, nearly 10,000 pair each day. We make over 180 styles, and we deliver work, play, and leisure shoes to more than 100 countries. So no matter the size of your foot or the demands of your job, Red Wing has a shoe for you, built to fit, built to last. Before we send a shoe out the door, before we put on the sole, before we shape the shoe, before we assemble the parts, before we cut the leather, we ask our customers what they want us to do. We learn everything there is to know about the job, the worker, and the shoes they are currently using. And then we design a better shoe. We figure out the best materials or find a new material. We try existing patterns and we create radical new ones. And then we test that shoe in the real world of hard work and hard play. When we're finally convinced that we have a better shoe to offer, only then do we begin to build them. It all begins with the leather. In the beginning, Charles Beckman teamed up with the SB Foot Tannery so he could get the best, most durable leather for his shoes. Today, we own and operate that tannery, so we control the quality of our leather. Our hides are chosen by us for our boots. We make no compromises on leather. Every year, 140,000 full hides, plus tons of hooks and eyelets, plus 3,281 miles of laces, plus 250,000 gallons of liquid soles are brought together by the good people in our raw materials warehouse. They help keep the factories running. A Red Wing shoe starts here, in the cutting room. Our cutters average 26 years on the job, so their highly skilled work and careful calculations are masked by movements that appear nearly effortless. They are cutting out the different pieces of leather required to make a particular boot. They lay a die, like a cookie cutter, on the leather, and then use a hydraulic press to create a crisp, clean cut. You'll see them jump from die to die. These craftspeople have been well-trained, and they know from experience exactly from where on the hide each piece must be cut if the boot is to live up to the standards required to be a Red Wing. Man-made materials are used to line the inside of many of our boots to improve fit and comfort. We cut them on a computerized cutting machine. Built to fit, built to last. Red Wing Shoes. Welcome to the fitting room, where naturally enough, we are fitting together the pieces the cutters created. 
Dozens of experienced, skilled hands sew one piece to another, proudly building a red wing boot. In fact, building some red wing boots requires over 120 hand operations. In the fitting room alone, there are often 30 steps. It's a logical path we follow, but at first it's hard to tell what's happening. Think of it as building a kit. You put the subassemblies together first and then join them into larger parts. Let's start here. A label, including the size, is sewn onto a gusset, which is the soft piece of leather under the laces. Some parts get die marked to guide the sewing done later. And some get trimmed. That's called skiving. She's cutting a bevel on the edge. Here, she's attaching a liner for the toe. Notice that part of it isn't glued? That's so the steel toe can be inserted later. Here's the beginning of a heel being assembled. This computer-controlled stitching is sewing quarters to counters. Here's what it looks like on the eventual boot. Dozens of people join this piece to that one, and soon you can recognize parts of your boots. See that stitch? That's Puritan triple stitching. It's one of the things that makes Red Wings just plain better. Stitching is very freeform handwork that takes a great deal of eye-hand coordination. We assemble the gusset and attach the eyelets. And finally, we attach gusset and vamp. This is called gusset stitching. And then your Red Wing is ready for lasting, the next department. Built to fit, built to last. Red Wing Shoes. This is the lasting department, where we fit the shoes to your feet. But your feet are busy, so we use last to stand in for you. Our lasts are made to be the same shape as your foot, so we have over 30 styles in hundreds of sizes. They are made of a very dense plastic, so we can use them many times over before they have to be replaced. We begin with an insole, the foundation of a red wing. When we're done, the insole will keep the rest of the components working together, maintaining the boot's shape and comfort. Here, you can see the insole. Below the insole will create stability, cushioning, and wear resistance. From the insole up, you'll experience comfort and stability, a shoe working with the shape of your foot. Some insoles get hand cut, a lot like we cut the leather, while others get cut by computerized equipment. She's applying a layer of cement. We let that dry for a bit and send it along so we can attach the ply rib. We'll connect the rest of the boot to this rib just a bit later. These are the hands of Red Wing Shoes, the hands of true craftspeople, fast, strong, skillful hands with no wasted motion. First, we temporarily tack the insole to the last. Then we insert a counter, a stiffener between two layers of the heel, and tack the whole boot to the last, again, temporarily. This is four-part lasting. Here, the front of the shoe, the vamp, is softened by heat and stretched over the last. The toe, the most noticeable part of your boot, is formed. But sometimes they pull the leather back, and what you see is the liner. That's because they're going to insert a steel toe between the leather and liner. But first we trim off some excess material. A little adhesive. A quick tap or two, and the steel toe is on. We add a strip to hide the steel edge because Red Wings must be strong and good looking. Now we pull the leather back over the toe and cement it in place. Automatic extruders shoot just the right amount of glue and clamps hold it in place until it dries. The next job is to pull the leather down tight on the last and staple the sides. we have to take out those temporary tacks. Give the heel a nice shape. This is called seat lasting. And cut off some excess material. 
and send the boot off to bottoming, the next step to becoming a Red Wing. Built to fit, built to last. Red Wing Shoes. Bottoming, this is where the rubber meets the road. Well, sort of. We do attach the bottoms or soles of shoes here, but the outsoles are actually made of three materials, urethane, rubber, and crepe. We attach bottoms in two basic ways. The first is called traditional welt attachment because it's the way soles have been attached since even before we began making shoes. The other method is direct attach because the bottoms are molded directly onto the boot. For most boots, we attach a welt which provides a surface to help attach the bottom. Traditional welt attachment requires about a dozen steps. It begins with a midsole, which adds both cushioning and stability. We glue on a shank, sometimes metal, sometimes plastic. Then we spread on some hot cork. It looks a little like peanut butter. We set it aside to dry and cool, where it forms a firm cushion for your foot. The next steps vary from boot style to boot style. We apply cement and we sew on layers, sometimes sewing all around, sometimes not around the heel, and we trim and shape. We cement and sew on the outsole. The outsole performs two functions, withstanding abuse from below, yet flexible enough to protect your body from jarring with each step. Some boots get heels nailed on. A metal plate on the last, inside the boot, crimps the end of the nail so they hold firm. This machine nails on the heel. And those heels get trimmed and scoured, which puts a nice finish on the edge. It's difficult to imagine how tough this job is because he makes it seem effortless. But in one cut, he has to make a smooth edge to the sole. Beautiful. Our second kind of bottoming is called direct attached welt. We do that in three different but similar ways. We skip the bottom filler and midsole and attach the sole directly to the welt. Liquid chemicals partially fill a mold. The boot is clamped into the mold and sent off into the tunnel. As it passes through, the chemicals react, completely filling the mold, bonding to the boot and hardening. At the end of the tunnel, he unclamps the boot, sends it off to finishing, and reloads for another cycle. Variations on this process allow us to do some amazing things with bottoms. We can mold two densities, one for durability and one for comfort. We can include special inserts like this. We can even attach directly to the boot with no welt at all. This robot is roughing the side of the boot, making a surface for the urethane to adhere to. Here's what the finished boot looks like. That's the story of bottoming, and we are near the bottom of the story. It's on to finishing. Built to fit. Built to last. Red Wing Shoes. The final step for a Red Wing is finishing, and that's what we're doing. First, it's the last of the lasts. These last pullers are removing them and sending them back to start the next pair of Red Wings. One last time, craftspeople put hands on the boots to add some oil here, some rubbing there, until the boot is perfect. Some boots get a footbed, what you feel most when you walk. It must be tough, stable, and soft, all at once, to cushion your foot and provide just the right amount of comfort and support. We use technically superior materials to ensure healthy walking day after day. Some boots need laces, of course. We go through miles and miles of laces. Boxes are prepared. Then each boot gets wrapped and boxed up for the trip out of the factory and into distribution. First stop is the warehouse, where you'll typically find 300,000 pairs of footwear. Every week, 50,000 pairs leave this warehouse, going to retailers in over 100 countries around the world. It is there, in a shoe store, that our story begins and ends. From our founder until today, 
Red Wing has always been about good fit. Our salespeople are specially trained to measure and fit your shoes, and they will carefully match your needs to the proper footwear, choosing from over 180 styles in 23 sizes and 10 widths. Well, I think that Red Wing always has prided itself on being the best work shoe and the best performing shoe in the market. We tend to use only the best materials that we can, and I like to think that the people that work here take their time to do the job right. We get letters from customers um, saying how wonderful the shoes are and, and um, like the steel toes that they've saved somebody's toe from getting crushed. Very proud. Very proud that we still have an American-made shoe. Because let's face it, if you got ha you got good shoes and happy feet, you're a happy person. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Our boots have helped build the world, from buildings and bridges to gardens and games. Everywhere people work hard, or play hard, you'll see Red Wing Shoes. Built to fit, built to last. Red Wing Shoes.